We journey across the dunes and the sweltering sands of the Sahara to bring you stories of struggle, survival and hope from one of the harshest environments on the planet. Join us as we explore how climate change is affecting Africa's largest desert. The Sahara, one of the harshest environments on the planet. Dry, hot and desolate. The Sahara stretches for 9 million square kilometers, covering much of North Africa. Varying from seas of dunes to sculpted sandstone plateaus, it can be a vast and merciless environment. Yet for centuries, people have survived across these sun-baked plains. The nomads of the Sahara, masters of resilience, efficiency and adaptation. We've traveled about 600 kilometers from Nuakshar to the capital of Mauritania to find the nomads who roam the Sahara. Now we're just nearing the Zagra region where we'll hopefully meet with some goat herders who'll tell us about life in this challenging landscape. At the heart of nomad life is animals. Ensuring their survival shapes this community's existence. So valuable they are to nomads that they're often referred to as blood wealth. Didi's day begins at sunrise. Didi and his herd walk a path guided by seemingly distinct landmarks, now mapped by memory. Back at the camp, the women get to work. Nomads are skilled in making necessities from what they have. From goat's milk to butter, nothing goes to waste. And there's time to spare for some fun. As the morning heat intensifies, Didi and his goats arrive at a nearby well, a water source that sustains all life here and will ultimately determine when it's time to move. Mara 
changing weather patterns have not gone unnoticed as the Sahara encroaches into previously fertile areas with erratic rainfall, a consequence of climate change. If the rains fail or a well dries up, nomads resort to digging. A task that may take hours or even days. In the face of unrelenting sun and sand, nomad life has always been hard and continues to be for Mauritania's remaining 200,000 nomads. Didi says modern things would make life easier, especially when nature is not on your side. For centuries, nomads have migrated across the Sahara, not only in search of water, but from unrelenting Saharan sands. The ancient town of Chingeti, nestled between the magnificent dunes of the Sahara and forever at the mercy of the sand. Its constant struggle with the desert has left much of the old town buried or abandoned. What remains today is only what lies on higher ground. Once world-renowned for its libraries of ancient Islamic texts, the guardians of Chingeti's remaining treasures still rise each day to stop them becoming the next casualties of the desert. This <laughs> The Ahmed Mahmoud Library contains a valuable record of Islamic literature and African scholarship from the late Middle Ages. يقولون المخطوط الديني بصفة عامة في الدول الإسلامية لا يعود دائما أكثر هو بروز وأكثر أهمية لحاجة الناس اليومية يقير المدي ثم مخطوطات أخرى تبرز المدي مدى تضلع الأوائل والمؤلفين الشناقيطة من من العلم الآخر ثم الفلك ثم الأسترومي الأسترولوجي والرياضيات هذا الكتاب ذا هو كتاب في الحديث النبوي the 
ديال الساحه داك الخرب فيه مع الباس داك يكتب قرايه ما هو ما ما هو قال لك تيقيل الزخرفه والفن الزخرفي يستهواه اكثر من بينما احنا الكتاب عندنا مهمه عندنا لان في حياه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فيه افعال واقواله لان احنا حياه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم حياتنا هي الحياه الحقيقيه وان هذا الكتاب من اهم الكتب عندنا وبالتالي ما نعرف كاع التلميذ اللي اخترتوا لهم مع انهم اوتام يقرا هذا الكتاب من اعظم الكتب الاجل لهم طبعا في التاريخ الاسلامي Lacking sophisticated technology, Saif has found other ways to care for the delicate books. قضية الصيانة اللي هي قلت لك كانت معد تعد في القديم وعاد ثم اللي هو عندنا متأخرين اللي هو سائر أخرى أحدث من ذاك قبل القديم كي قلت لك إن كان مكتوب ليوا من طرح كل تام الشمس ينتكتد عن مجراهم وتبتصيك الرطوبة. Chingeti was founded in 777 and by the 11th century had become a cross-Saharan center of commerce connecting sub-Saharan Africa to the Mediterranean. Aging nomads recall how their forefathers crossed the desert for centuries. <laughs> وجايبوا من هنا في السبخ صح ويعني يلحقوا دون الزويرات لا يكسروا شيء قال له التكري التكري اللي يكسر من الصبا نوعا قال له يعد الكيف يارك الكتب كل واحد هون واحد هون واحد هون كل دخل فيها حبل وينضم من الدار اللي من الملك Paleolithic evidence suggests that the area around Chingeti has been occupied for thousands of years Rock art found in nearby caves indicate that the land was once a grassy savanna where giraffe roamed alongside the local people and their cattle. But over the centuries, the shifting sands of the Sahara have forced Chingeti's residents to twice move and rebuild the town on higher ground. These are the stone walls of one of the oldest houses in Chingeti, built in the 13th century. But like much of this old town, it's under threat. In fact, this is not the original door. That one lies about three meters below the sand. ولين جاني الدشرة ذا هي عدنا على رأس قلي قلية كي كي يطيش كأن أنا يسرقوا قامت تزير وطلعت الكذي وطمرت ديار حتى الديار هم ديار أحد يناتيها ب ب ب في محدات من على ديار بني على ديار خرابي الزيرة ما فات خرابات هاي الزيرة ذا هي اللي تمت كيف مشيها حتى سبب بني أنا المدينة الثالثة اللي في زر الواد الأخر لأن الزيرة إنها مهد وحنا ما نعتقد ما نعرف وياك كان يتم مد الشقيطي وتوسع الشمس تاع قبل حق اطار تعود اطار لا حد ناحيه من واحد Most of what sustained Chingeti in the past has now faded, leaving the town to an uncertain future. بعض الاحيان احنا نخاف عليها نخاف عليها بان قاعد لان سمع يقعد ما تخالق يعني تم الجفاف خالق وتم الرياح خالق وتم وتم الهجره ماشيه مستمره لا سمع قاعد يتحمل خالق ومجرد يتحاسب الشنقيطي ياسر الدول العربيه وياسر من الناس اللي يجي لموريتانيا موريتانيا معروفه لها بلاد شنقيطي The residents of Chingeti struggle against the unrelenting Saharan sands every day There is no grand plan to halt the ever-encroaching desert and the fear persists that without a resurgence in tourism or trade, there won't be enough resources available to build a fourth Chingeti, if or when the time comes. The Sahara is the largest hot desert in the world, with temperatures easily soaring to 50 degrees. 
Finding water sources, often in unlikely places, is the only reason humans and animals have survived here for centuries. In the desert, water means life. Terjit Oasis is one of Mauritania's desert wonders, neatly nestled between the desert dunes and the rocky plateaus of the Adra region. For thousands of years, water has filtered through the steep cliffs emerging at the sandy base of the palm-lined gorge. Jamal is a descendant of the early nomads who made Terjit their home in the 14th century. <laughs> Jamal's forefathers planted the first date palms here. Today, the abundant plantation gives the oasis its iconic look. And the water continues to keep the plants alive through Jamal's simple but effective irrigation system. The nomadic and nearby sedentary communities in the Adra region have come to depend on Terjit Oasis. <laughs> A reliable source of water is a rare thing in the Sahara, and people and animals make the most of it when they can. Here in northeastern Chad, these camels are returning from a week in the sands, and there is only one thing on their minds. Camels are extremely well adapted to life in the desert. They can go over a week without water and for months without food. Their eyes, noses and feet are tailored for desert conditions. And of course, there's that famous fat store. The shade and water at Gelta Darche allows the camels to bath and refresh and provides a unique location for learning to swim. But such places are few and far between. Just 300 kilometers south from here is a desert community which isn't so fortunate. 65-year-old Amne Bashar Ahmed is among the first residents of Uri Kasoni, a refugee camp in the desert. Her journey into the desolate Sahel is marked with scars, both emotional and physical. <laughs> Despite the frequent sandstorms and the oppressive heat, the camp's population has swelled to over 27,500 people, all of whom fled violence and conflict in neighboring Darfur, Sudan, just seven kilometers from the camp. The risk of insecurity overlooked in favor of proximity to a sustainable water source. 
In the early days, clean, drinkable water was difficult to come by, but that has since changed. Here in Chad, survival comes down to ingenuity. This water source is completely man-made, an artificial lake that supports the lives of over 30,000 people in the desert. Kariaki Lake is the source of life for Uri Kasoni refugee camp and the small rural community that surrounds it. NGOs assisted by refugees take part in a daily struggle to provide camp inhabitants with enough water, roughly 15 litres per person per day, five litres a day less than the UN recommended amount. <laughs> For Amne and the rest of her fellow refugees, the water in the camp has allowed them to eke out a simple yet sustainable existence away from the horrors of the past. <laughs> Amne has taken to educating the children she cares for about preserving water. This is the Sahel, thousands of kilometers of dry, arid earth, an ancient battleground between man and the desert. Bordering the Sahara, desert sands are silently engulfing the region, destroying fertile land and displacing vulnerable communities in the process. But they are those fighting back. These are unlikely heroes, men and women at the forefront of the Green Revolution who may just secure the future livelihoods of millions. Colonel Papa Wali Gay leads the fight against desertification in northern Senegal. Et je suis le directeur général de l'Agence nationale de la Grande Muraille Verte au niveau du Sénégal. On est effectivement au cœur de la Grande Muraille Verte dans son segment Sénégal qui fait 545 km. Vous voyez les plantations qui sont autour de nous, sont des plantations qui datent de l'année 2010. Trees are the first line of defense against desertification. Stretching from Dakar to Djibouti, the Great Green Wall Initiative is an ambitious project that aims to halt desertification by planting 11 million hectares of trees across the width of Africa. Oui, euh, au Sénégal, nous sommes un pays très exposé au phénomène de la désertification, puisque nous avons à peu près 35 000 hectares qui sont dégradés par an et sur lesquels l'État n'arrive à reconstruire que 30 000 hectares. Donc l'effort du gouvernement du Sénégal, c'est de faire plus de reconstruction que de dégradation. Reducing that degradation is crucial to improving the lives of the semi-nomadic communities that live in this harsh environment. Ibrahima Diawara, the principal of the local school, has witnessed how the loss of land drives poverty, unemployment and forced migration. L'école a, a ouvert ses portes après, quelques années après, l'école a été obligée de fermer. Bon, le problème majeur ici, c'est la transhumance. Parce que d'habitude, euh, vous voyez avec euh, le, 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 le problème, c'est l'herbe, c'est l'herbe qui est l'exigence. Puisque les, et puis ici, les populations, ils ont, ils ont, ils ont, ils ont plus leur priorité, c'est dans, dans les animaux. Maintenant, et les enfants sont, obli sont obligés d'être avec leurs parents. Nous aussi, on n'a pas les moyens de retenir les enfants. Bon, c'est ça. Maintenant, vu cela, l'école a, a été fermée. La dernière fois que l'école a été fermée, c'était en 2006. The Sahel has always been a hard place to survive, and the Green Wall Initiative has expanded from tree planting to include education and action on better land use. 
Donc il faut dire ici qu'au Sénégal, je crois que c'est comme dans les autres pays africains, la cause principale c'est l'action de l'homme. C'est les hommes qui détruisent plus que ce qu'ils ne construisent. On coupe beaucoup d'arbres, on brûle la forêt et on ne laisse pas grand chose. Ça c'est un. Deuxième cause principale, c'est les changements climatiques. Il n'y a plus assez de pluie, il fait très chaud et le milieu se dégrade. Ça aussi c'est un constat. The Sahel lies between the Sahara and the African savanna. It is one of the most threatened regions when it comes to climate change. But some communities, like the women in this village, have found a way to fight back. My Muna Sene commands respect, quietly leading an environmental revolution. Her army, a band of women, their weapons, spades and hoes. The women of Koili Alpha are pioneering new approaches to land use. They're preparing arable land for planting season. By harvest, this community will enjoy fruits and vegetables never grown here before. The women's agricultural production has boosted food security and generated employment. Their success has meant that instead of migrating to find new pastures for their animals, they can stay in the village all year round. Cette grande muraille a permis de permettre aux animaux qui étaient là de revenir puisque l'habitat est reconstitué. Nous avons maintenant des oiseaux, des animaux qu'on ne voyait pas depuis 20 ans, depuis 40 ans même, et qui sont en train de revenir. Mais la population aussi a gagné beaucoup dans ses impacts. Puisque comme vous le voyez, je le disais hier, les éleveurs ne vont plus en transhumance, les enfants restent et les écoles marchent mieux. Now, more than 142 children are enrolled in Ibrahima's school, and he's proud to help them develop and grow to give something back to the community. Il n'y a personne, par exemple, qui, 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 de la localité, qui, 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 est, qui est dans, les, dans, dans le personnel administratif, de, les agents de l'État qui sont là. Donc, on veut que notre espoir, c'est que demain, dans un futur très proche, que ces enfants-là puissent occuper nos postes à nous. Papa Gay believes the battle to reclaim the lands of the Sahel is one he and the community he serves can win. Moi, j'étais dans l'armée, mais je me suis arrêté au lycée seulement. Mais maintenant, aujourd'hui, mon expérience de stratégie d'armée est transformée, non pas pour attaquer, mais pour contourner. If the world continues to do little to reverse the effects of man-made climate change, the battle with the desert will intensify. The successful start of the Great Green Wall initiative in Senegal provides a valuable lesson for other vulnerable communities across the continent.